We welcome you here at the Technical Forum at the Group Exhibit Hydrogen and Fuel Cells 2013 for our, unfortunately, last presentation for this year. The presentation has a topic, innovative electrolyte membrane with low cost and without, io without ioventomal problem. And um, the presentation comes from the company Nippon Kodoshi Corporation. He is the general manager, Mr. Harua Sawa. Give him a big hand, please. Thank you. <coughs> I'm Harua Sawa from Nippon Kodoshi Corporation in Japan. Today, uh, I'd like to introduce our new electrolyte membrane for fuel cells, electrolyzer, and uh, redox flow cells, IO brain. Um, <clears throat> this is quite different from the conventional electrolyte membrane, such as uh, Nafion, fluoropolymer and uh, hydrocarbon type membranes. The conventional electrolyte membranes are made of pure organic polymers, but this is not pure organic polymers, inorganic organic nanohybrid membranes. And uh, <clears throat> it is a hi nanoscale hybrid of inorganic oxide and organic polymers. So uh, this has both pro properties of inorganic oxide and uh, organic polymers. We call it IOBrain. And uh, IOBrain is mainly uh, characterized by low price and environmental friendliness, namely fluorine free. Okay, uh, firstly, let's think about uh, a basic question. The conventional uh, electrolyte membranes are made of pure, or uh, con conventional uh, electrolyte membranes for low temperature PEM fuel cells are made of pure organic polymer. But why organic polymer? The answer is flexibility. Of course, uh, organic polymer is uh, very flexible, and flexible means that molecules can move freely. And it is very important for uh, low temperature, uh, uh, fast proton movement. And on the other hand, uh, in the case of hard materials, such as inorganic oxides, ceramics, and glasses, um, molecular motion is limited to lattice vibration, so we can't expect fast proton movement. But uh, the conventional organic polymer electrolyte membranes have a few serious problems. One is the high cost high price, but why expensive? <clears throat> In the fuel cell, the membrane is exposed by oxidation and the radical attacks, but organic polymers are originally weak against oxidation and uh, radical attacks, so special materials are needed. Uh, for example, fluoropolymers, nafion, so they are expensive because they are special materials. That's the reason. And uh, <clears throat> in addition, uh, the conventional fluoropolymers have another serious problem of uh, environmental friendliness. Uh, platinum catalyst. Platinum catalyst uh, is a very rare material and a rare resources. So uh, we have to recycle the platinum catalyst in the electrode. <coughs> uh, however, uh, uh, and uh, the uh, simplest, simplest way, simplest way of uh, recycling platinum catalyst is 
burning, burning the uh, used membrane or used MEA. But unfortunately, uh, when the conventional fluoropolymers are burned, toxic hydrogen fluoride is exhausted from the fluoropolymers. When uh, fewer cells are used widely, I think it becomes a very serious problem. So, uh, in conclusion, as long as the materials are limited within organic polymers, these problem problems cannot be solved, I think. So, uh, we left organic polymers and developed a new inorganic organic hybrid. And, but uh, why hybrid? As I explained before, only the reason for uh, only the reason why we choose uh, organic polymers is flexibility. <clears throat> but the other point, uh, radical resistance, oxidation resistance, thermal resistance, hydrophilicity, <clears throat> low crossover, creep resistance. Uh, in the case of uh, ordinary organic polymers, all points are not good. So I think um, organic polymers are originally not suitable to the fuel cell materials. On the other hand, <clears throat> in the case of inorganic oxides, most of points are excellent. Radical, <clears throat> radical resistance, excellent. Oxidation resistance, excellent. Thermal resistance, excellent. Hydrophilicity, excellent. Low crossover, excellent. Creep resistance, excellent. So, <clears throat> uh, inorganic oxides are originally suitable to the fuel cell materials. And uh, special materials are not needed. So, they are not expensive. But unfortunately, there is only one not good. It's flexibility. So uh, we came up with the idea of hybrid. <clears throat> when uh, they are hybridized, all points are pretty good. Not excellent, but uh, pr pretty good. <clears throat> and this is our inorganic, organic, non-hybrid materials, uh, iobrain. <clears throat> in iobrain, inorganic oxide in the size of about one nanometer, very small uh, inorganic oxide combined with organic polymer molecules. <clears throat> uh, they, uh, they, they combine chemically. No, this is not a mixture, not a mixture, but a chemical compound. And as an inorganic oxide, uh, silica, zirconium oxide, tungsten acid are employed. And as an organic polymers, PVA, polyvinyl alcohol, is mainly employed. PVA is very, very cheap materials and it is not stable chemically or thermally but uh, uh, once it is hybridized with inorganic oxide chemical and uh, thermal properties of PVA are drastically changed drastically improved besides uh, inorganic oxides contain proton conductive site such as tungstic acid and uh, sulfonic acid. So I brain is proton conductive. Uh, how, how is the performance? Um, PVA, polyvinyl alcohol, is originally uh, in, uh, soluble, soluble in water, like this. <coughs> but um, once it is hybridized with inorganic oxide, it be it becomes insoluble in hot water, uh, even in the hot strong acid, even in the hot strong alkali. I think uh, it is because of PVA is cross-linked by inorganic oxide. And uh, uh, this 
figure show the results of thermal analysis in air. And these peaks revealed that uh, heat, heat generate, and it means that uh, uh, oxidation occur. And in the case of pure PVA, this one, <coughs> uh, oxidation starts just above 200 degrees Celsius. On the other hand, in the case of nanohybrid iobrain, this, this one, uh, oxidation doesn't occur up to 350 degrees Celsius. So iobrain can stand even in the condition of uh, above, uh, over 200 degrees Celsius. And iobrain is uh, strong against radical attacks. Uh, this is the <coughs> results of a Fenton test. In the Fenton test, uh, in the Fenton test solution, uh, oxidative, a large amount of oxidative radicals generate. Uh, it's very severe uh, condition. <coughs> For example, typical hydrocarbon type membrane sul sulfonated peak uh, decompose within 10 hours in this condition. On the other hand, iobrain can stand even in this severe uh, condition. And uh, crossover is very low. Uh, that, uh, permeability of oxygen and nitrogen is far lower than that of natrium. And uh, low crossover allows thin membrane, and a thin membrane is very important for power generation of uh, uh, fuel cells. And this is uh, power generation performance. <clears throat> thin membrane, about 13 micrometers thickness, uh, show higher power generation performance than that of Nafion 112. And iobrain is also environmental friendly. Um, when the conventional fluoropolymer electrolyte are uh, burned for recycling platinum catalyst, toxic hydrogen fluoride is exhausted. <coughs> on, the, on the other hand, in the case of iobrain, uh, no toxic substances come out because uh, it's fluorine free. Besides, uh, the manufacturing process of iobrain is aqueous process. So uh, no organic solvents are used. So uh, the manufacturing process is also environmental friendly. And iobrain is uh, proton conductive, so uh, it is applicable to electrolyzers, especially hydrogen generated. <coughs> uh, I like it, like this reaction, and uh, the reverse reaction of high, uh, fuel, fuel cell reaction. And it is also applicable to redox flow cells. <coughs> And uh, this is, uh, uh, iobrain is also applicable to another type of electrolyzer. It's alkaline type electrolyzer. Some kinds of iobrains are very stable in the strong alkali uh, situation. And iobrain can absorb large amount of alkaline solution, alkaline solution electrolyte. Uh, in nanoscale intermolecular space. So it can work for an uh, alkaline type electrolyzer. I think it, uh, it's very interesting application. And how is the price? This table shows a rough estimate of price. This is uh, not exact. Uh, pre please note that uh, these are not exact and not fixed. The price is dependent on our total production 
amount. Now uh, our total production amount I is very uh, small, so uh, now the price is about 200 euro per square meter. Not, not cheap. But uh, when the total production is over uh, 10,000 square meters, <coughs> the price will be uh, under 100 euro per square meters. And uh, when total production is <coughs> over uh, 100,000 square meters per year, uh, the price will be under 50 euro per square meters. And uh, uh, when total production is over 1 million, uh, the price will be 30 to 10 euro per square meters. <coughs> I think, I believe uh, that these are not expensive. And this is our uh, production machine for IOBrain. Uh, this is not so large, but scale up is not difficult because the manufacturing process is very simple. So, uh, if you like samples, please contact us. Thank you. Thank you for your attention. Thank you, Mr. Sava, for this interesting overview. So, um Mr. Sava invited you to come to his booth here at the group exhibit Hydrogen and Fuel Cells to discuss um, or to ask um, any questions. Um, it's not being here, so um, if you like to discuss uh, anything with him, um, please go to the booth D79. It's quite here, not just a short way to come to the booth. Okay. Thank you again for Thank being you. here. It's your big hand. Give him a big hand, please. Thank you very Thank much. You. And now it's up to me to say thank you to all of you because this was our last presentation for this year here at the Technical Forum of the group Exhibit Hydrogen and Fuel Cells. We will be very happy if, you, if we could see you all again next year. It's the 20th group exhibit, Hydrogen and Fuel Cells, then. Thank you very much and goodbye. Have a good last day here on the group exhibit. Goodbye.